Hello folks and welcome back to the workshop and yet another inverter project. Now this time we are doing something a little bit different although I do tend to say that and then end up doing pretty much the same thing. So I did have quite a bit of extensive footage on what I'm doing here but sadly it got lost when a memory card in my trusty GoPro decided to die. So I'm gonna have a little bit of the old footage uh, that I shot that I'd saved on the PC, but I'm just gonna reshoot this bit here now um, to introduce you guys to what's going on. So what we have here is an inverter that was originally in a van. It's an Ansaldo. Uh, inverter pretty old kind of the usual kind of junk that I end up kind of uh, getting uh, to mess about with it's pretty standard it's got some 400 amp uh, 600 volt IGBTs a um, couple of electrolytic caps contactor pre-charge bus plates blah 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 so it had uh, quite a few you know, prehistoric um, kind of boards in there. That's a power supply board. There was another driver board and various other junk uh, that I stripped off. And we have replaced it with this single PCB he here. And in the back of it, uh, you'll see where I've connected the six IGBT um, gates to their respective drivers now this board here is not one that you will have seen me messing about with in the past um, although I have had quite a few of them it is, has always been my intent to have a play now this board here uh, was designed by Paul Holmes and um, did quite a few um, little projects and stuff uh, based around Paul's DC controller design but I never ever got to uh, having a look at his AC stuff until now. So what we have here is a board I picked up uh, from a, a gentleman on the Eco Modder forum in the last couple of months. He was selling it because he couldn't get it to work. Um, I got it, programmed it, seemed to work okay. So what I decided to do just to make a bit of a test setup here on the bench. Um, went ahead and stripped off all the prehistoric uh, control boards out of this inverter. And as I say, just dropped in Paul's board here and pretty much started to learn um, about how the thing works. Now, the first problem that we had was that the Ansaldo inverter used these the black current sensors uh, the part number came back as a caution or no, no, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correct but anyway we couldn't use these because they require a plus and minus 5 volt supply and put out a plus and minus 4 volt signal uh, respective to current and direction so what I did was went ahead and swapped in some Lemhas 300S uh, sensors here. And um, interestingly, these cautions are the exact same size, have the same bolt position, and that. so we were pretty much able to just uh, throw them straight in there. Um, ended up fitting three because initially it looked like the board ne needed three current sensors um, the hardware does the, the microcontroller doesn't read all three of them uh, but the hardware overcurrent circuit does so we're just, I just got a bit confused but it works fine with the three sensors in there um, as you'll see in some of the clips coming up when we're uh, running the motor now 
I'll bring you guys in for a closer look uh, in a minute. But I suppose big question is why are we having a look at this? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Um, Paul's software implements uh, a system called field orientated control. Uh, whereas uh, the uh, system that Johannes Hubner um, designed uses uh, slip control. So I wanted to see, uh, I wanted to kind of get a feel for what all the hubbub about field orientated control is and I figured this was the way to go. Now I should also point out that this board software, everything to do with it is fully open source also. As in fact, uh, I think pretty much almost everything that Paul does is open source. And that's, uh, you know, that's a big attraction to me for this because it means that I can mess with it. I can understand it, control it, all that kind of thing. Now, um, so yeah, uh, I got it on here, uh, spent a day of not being able to get it to work. Um, which was actually instructive because it kind of got me back in looking at the software and I found that for some reason um, there was a call to a particular function that had been commented out. Once I got that fixed, we were back in business. Um, so that's it. This is, uh, this is our first look at an inverter that implements field orientated control. Now, one of the things about that is that you do tend to need very uh, good resolution current reading. So I kind of deliberately left all of my current sensor wiring um, is all unshielded. You know, there's loops in it here. It's running down around some of the high voltage stuff. So I wanted to see, you know, would we get into trouble here um, with having uh, noise on our current sensors? And again here, noise on the encoder. I've got loops here. There's no shielding on it, blah, blah. So, so far, uh, just running on the... Just doing a bench run here doesn't seem to worry it. Um, uh, but we'll be probably putting this in some kind of a test vehicle fairly soon. I want to get a feel for uh, what that can do for us. And uh, yeah, that's it. So as I say, apologies guys. I did have quite a bit of footage of me putting all this together and talking about it. But that got lost. Now <laughs> I don't know, maybe that's a good thing. You don't get to, you know, two hours of me talking nonsense. So I'll just take the camera down, give you guys a little bit of a look-see on the board itself. Um, should point out that this is a complete uh, logic and driver board uh, built into one, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, so, all right, let's go have a quick look. Um in here at the board itself as uh, we pretty much got the ds pick microcontroller here some hardware fault detection logic here um igbt drivers all isolated there's some true hole components on the back over here is a circuit for measuring the high voltage i managed to let the smoke out of that so that ain't gonna work again and underneath there are the relays uh, for driving the pre-charge and the main contactor. Uh, communication with, with, with it is just via RS-232 serial, three-wire system, and just a normal serial terminal on any operating system. Uh, so this is it, guys. Uh, so we can go now and have a look at some of the clips where I'm running motors. Woohoo! Okay, well, uh, it turned out that I had quite a bit of a problem with the software. <clears throat> Excuse me. The subroutine, or I should say the call for the subroutine uh, for the space vector modulation, which is the part of the software that sends the information to the PWM generators to tell them to go out and to make voltage 
was commented out. So once I found that rather late last night, we started to make PWM and we started to be able to spin our motor. So woohoo. Now, um, since then I've been doing a few little experiments and I'm pleased to say that we are getting quite a good result just turning the motor here. So let's go have a look at what we got going on. Okay, time for some expert camera work. Not. All right, so got our inverter. We're, pre we're presently hooked up to our Prius battery just because I've got some regen going on here. And uh, let me get you guys down here a little bit more. So let's go for some AC current. I'm presently set to allow 50 amps of uh, motor current. Um, so just in a stall position here, which has nothing going on, no throttle applied, um, we can actually hear there's a 10 kilohertz PWM going on. A little bit of current flow, and you can, if you were to look at the motor, you'll see the shaft kind of rocks back and forth a very small amount. Now, we give her some throttle, we get moving, and obviously that's you know, proportional to throttle. And if I floor it, I get up close to um, I get up close to my 50 amps. And then when I release the throttle, we regen back down. Now, there's a few bits of tuning we need to do because obviously we have some problems here. So probably down to some of the parameters that I haven't quite managed to set up and or a bit of noise going on there on the encoder signals possibly. But it is very functional. And works quite well. Now, there's a few parameters um, that we need to be able to work out for the motor. And keep in mind that I'm learning this stuff as I'm going along as well, because I've no real experience with this method of uh, motor control. Um, so what I've got to do is uh, something called the rotor time constant. So I've got to play with that figure and there's some proportional integral uh, bits in there as well that we need to kind of work out. But the basic premise of can we spin a motor with it here on the bench, um, yeah, seems to be pretty much proven. Um, I would say I would have had this a lot sooner had it not been for that silly software bug. Now, one other thing to keep in mind here is that in the layout here uh, with the inverter and the signal and the power wa 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 wiring and that, at no point have I done anything there to minimize noise. Um, got my current sensor, cables are completely unsh unshielded encoder sensor unshielded there's wires crossing going all over the place there um and yeah so pretty much i mean it's uh, it's still managing to operate now one of the things that i'm quite impressed with its ability to do is to regulate the uh, motor side current now like for example if i go in here little serial Interface, let me just uh, if I say max motor amps, I make that 20 amps. And we send that. I don't know if you'll be able to see the see this here, but I'll try. Uh, if I basically floor the throttle, I go to 20 amps and sit there as the motor builds up speed. I got the throttle floored, I got 20 amps RMS almost exactly here. You can see the motor is just building up speed and now we're 
doing whatever we're doing there. I think we just reached max RPM or something, but you can see we're basically holding 20 amps bang on there as long as I keep the throttle mashed. And then I go to a higher regen current and we come to a stop. Um, so that I'm quite impressed with for just basic open loop um, current sen sensors. Uh, so I think we're going to be doing some more experiments with Paul's brain here. Uh, but this is, yeah, this was just to see could I actually get the thing to work here. And uh, somehow I seem to have managed it probably more by error and just pure, um, pure uh, luck rather than judgment. So, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Not sure how long it's going to turn out to have been, but uh, yeah, so a different open source inverter system that we're going to be investigating. And as usual, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Check the links in the descriptions for Patreon, PayPal, GitHub, forums, webshop. And until then, Happy vector controlling.